This fact ought not to be ignored simply because ordinary people do not know that they are possessed with such a faculty as that of which we are speaking. That is third eye. Adu Guru Madhya Dalai. That is the seat of our spiritual sadhana also. As regards man's other faculty of vision, let us call to mind the well-known fact that it is not equality developed in all alike. and that is moreover liable to be affected by various causes such as distance and nearness crossness crossness and minuteness confusion and concealments idea tension and uh, predominance of other matter and lastly the defect of the organ by age or disease so all men do not see alike and every day we meet people who are short sighted long sighted dim sighted blind or partially blind as in the case of color blindness which scientists say is caused by the imperfect working of a portion of the rods and cones of the retina or by the fact that humors of the eye may absorb certain colors and thus prevent them from passing on to the retina at the brain so that some can only see some colors and not others Moreover, even without any of these defects, man's vision is by nature limited to a certain range, and there are certain animals whose range of vision is naturally circumscribed within the narrow limit of a few inches, while there are others whose visual range is much wider than that of man. In these respects, optimoscopy. and optical science have done much by compounding medicine and inventing instruments such as spectacles telescopes and microscopes to improve the outward faculty of vision by correcting constitutional or natural defects and limits while such in the case of things in the outer temple of nature it should not be a matter of surprise that when we enter the vestibule of the inner temple we find a most subtle faculty of vision we have third eye which is free from all defects and belong to the outward eyes and unfolds to us the mysterious nature of aura its light and colors the seat of this faculty is the aperture of the size of a thumb in the internal structure of man's forehead at the base of the nose between the two eyebrows this cavity is the reservoir of tissues which spreads itself in the body or it's being framed by the vital airs as a spreading light of precious gem placed in a closed room collects itself in the keyhole so the luminosity of sattva <coughs> essence of the set tissues in the hridayas the heart collects itself in the set aperture on the forehead and the universe the yogi in the respect of all things irrespective of meanness or distance or like of space and time this internal faculty has been called by different names with different with reference to its position and its properties it is called the light of the head murdana jyoti the seat of immortality amruta sthana the circle between the eyebrows bhu chakra tai of the forehead lalata netram and the phala netram tai of wisdom gnana chakshus the celestial eye divya chakshus or divya drishti and so on thus <coughs> this faculty is not that elaborate organism which the eye of the body possesses but this is not necessary the cause of the perception of form is not the same in all in the case of man generally the cause is the contact of the external eye with the form by the medium of the external light where in the case of animals that roam at night and can see in the dark the cause of perception is simply the contact of eye with the form no light being necessary at all and the occultist needs neither the external light nor the external light his perception arises from the conjunction of the mind and the soul assisted by the spiritual light which results from such conjunction and shows itself in the aforesaid cavity of the forehead the yogi disregarding all other instrumental causes sees everything solely from pratibha that is the light or the right knowledge instantly produced from the conjunction of the mind and the soul antecedent to the exercise of the reasoning faculty the knowledge is technically called taraka 
which may be fully studied by the disciple in the Upanishads entitled Saubhagya Lakshmi, Dhyana Bindu, Amrita Bindu and Tripura Tapani and in Vaisheshika, Nyaya, Siddhanta and Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. The exercise of this faculty and its powers are also mentioned incidentally in Rig Veda 5, Volume 5, 42, Chanda Yoga Upanishad 8, 14, Matsya Purana 4, 1, Nirkuta 1, 20, Taitreya Samhita, Bhagavad Gita Chapter 18, 34 stanza and in numerous places in the Mahabharata and Sri Bhagavatam. It is remarkable that uh, Prabodha Chandrodaya identifies the internal visual faculty of the yogi with the third eye which the deity Rudra is declared in various sacred works to be possessed of. Each one of our senses can thus be developed infinitely so as to take in and respond to wider and wider regions of vibrations either through yogic practices or through securing the help of some power in nature. The divine vision is but the synthesis of the powers exercised by the various <coughs> senses organs which is after all but a limited expression of it. Veda Vyas Maharishi bestowed such a power on Sanjaya. you are getting the blind. Mahabharata Yuddha Nadi Thide Naan Ingeil Nodli Anta Vedavasar Gheltar Avaga Vedavasar Enn Marta Sanji Aage E Tharada Open Marta Neenu Nodu Yuddha Nadi Odo Adda Nani Dhrashtra Kheldu Anta So the third day can be opened By a personality like Vedavasar Maharishi Equal to him Or by yourself attaining The Samadhi State Yivaga Yelru Yeltar Third day open agai tu, he chakra open at third day a salmon I open a chance. A person who gets the third day open, he will not be available to all public. He will be silent in a place in the samadhi state, experience the bliss of Parabrahma. Sumune Yurala Hel Kaltare, Adala Nataka. Enable to him observe what took place on the battle field of Kurukshetra and report it to King Dhritarashtra. Sri Krishna conferred the same vision on Arjuna and Uddhava. This is the Bhagavad Gita. Mm. Arjuna is the third eye open. He 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 is the third eye open. Because he physically in LA, it is impossible. That is limit illa. It is limitless. Vision is limitless. Behold, O Partha, my form, hundredfold, thousandfold, varies in kind, in color, in shape, and divine. Behold the Adityas, the Vasudhas, the Rudras, the two Ashwinis, and also the Maruts. Behold many marvels never seen before the Swa Bharata. Here totally behold the whole universe movable and immovable standing in one in my body. O oh, Godakesha, with anything else you desire to see, but verily you are not able to behold me with these your eyes. I give you the divine eye, behold my sovereign yoga. <coughs> Such are the powers of the yogis and still greater are the <coughs> faculties of the ancient rishis for they are able to visualize in great detail any event of any nature that might have taken place of any particular time in the near past or in the distant past or even in the future. The information that is passed on to us till this day by great rishis of the past is found in our scriptures. These are the sources from which spin the following details of creation and the construction of solar lunar calendar or panchanga that is followed in our country for the purpose of spiritual sadhana and for ritualistic practices as described in Sanatana Varnashrama Dharma Adike Rishi Gulu Panchanga 100 years ugly, 500 years ugly they could write the Panchanga because through the third eye they can see the future Okay, Grahe Vrasthiti Gati Mumbai Tala Gati 29th March Swala Rekhi Vsakta so through the uh, this one vision, uh, third eye, they can give you the fact. Okay. <coughs> when the last day of Brahma was at its close, he withdrew into himself into yogic meditation. <coughs> the Vedas chanced to slip out of from his mouth. 
అండ్ హైగ్రీవ దసరా మేడ్ అవే విత్ దెమ్ ద లార్డ్ విష్ టు ఇమీడియట్లీ చేంజ్ హిమ్సెల్ఫ్ ఇన్ టు టైనీ ఫిష్ అండ్ అప్లోడ్ ఇన్ ద వాటర్ ఇన్ ద జాయిన్ ఫార్మ్స్ ఆఫ్ సత్యవ్రత ఆన్ ద కింగ్ వాజ్ ఆఫరింగ్ obligations of water to the gods and means he was about to throw it into the river when the little creature begged hard to be saved satyavata took it home and kept it in a vessel of water but it grew on marvelously and the king tried wells and tanks lakes and rivers in its vein it vain and was about to throw it into the ocean when it cried out to him hold you will have need of me seven days from this a mighty deluge will hide the face of the earth then you will see a large ship coming towards you go into it and take with you the seven rishis animals plants of healing virtue and seeds of various kinds when it is tossed violently by the stormy waves fasten it to me with a serpent i will guide you safely through the vast waters till brahma would wake up to a new day further i shall impart to you the highest wisdom ever known to man verily this is no fish that grows grows so fast in such a wonderfully short space the lord might have chosen to manifest himself thus such satyavrata to himself in hushed ave and while the words yet on his lips the strange fish vanished from his sight satyavrata the pious king is no other than shraddha deva vaishyasta manu amit manvantra there is an incarnation of vishnu and there are certain covering of vishals manu manus sans the saptarishis indra and the devas devatas at the end of four yugas the vedas the repository of all wisdom disappear from the earth the saptarishis recover it by intense meditation and give it back to the new race the manus are the founders of royal dynasties and see that the various grades of men observe their dharma the anumur the manuputras are the sons of manu incarnate again and again in the descendants and are the guardians of law and order to the end of the manvantara the devatas are the shining ones are fed by the subtle essences that are afforded to them during sacrifices and bless humanity in turn with peace and plenty indra holds sway over the three worlds and the <coughs> beings that have all therein the lord incarnates are the mighty sons of wisdom the kumaras dait atatreya and the like and impart to the world laws of action and contemplation sri krishna arpanamastu